Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Hi everyone, let's talk about Once Upon a Time Season 6, Episode 3, The Other Shoe. Let's start with some quick thoughts. I love that Regina's way to sort of get on Mr. Hyde's good side was to make him her lasagna, but then the evil queen actually got there first and got him with food as well. And I was like, this, like what? Like now we're making food for people? I don't know if you noticed, but there was a little mouse running in the O of Once Upon a Time in the title opening, which was so adorable. I'm like, oh, there's a little mouse running. Emma laying down on Archie's couch was adorable. The way she just kind of was like, I just, <sighs> and then she just kind of falls on the couch and she's just like, I don't know. I was really excited about the Dr. Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll's teaming up in Dr. Frankenstein's lab. That sounds exciting and scary at the same time, depending on what they work on. And kind of going off of that, I thought it was interesting that Snow was looking at them and thought, hmm, we could make them a teacher at the school. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> when Belle was listening to the tape that Rumpel made for their unborn baby, I was like, no, don't fall for him again. Don't do it, it never ends well. Moving on to the L slash Ashley storyline. Now, of course, the most important part of this whole story was Gus, the little mouse. Apparently, I have very weird priorities when I watch Once Upon a Time. I'm like, ooh, mouse! But more seriously, I really enjoyed uh, the changes they made to the Cinderella story. And more specifically, I love the twist that one of her evil stepsisters wasn't so evil. I mean, I don't know whatever happened to the other one, because apparently she just disappeared. Oh, we're just gonna ignore the fact that there's supposed to be a second stepsister. Who knows what happened to her? I knew that in this episode, there would be a connection between Cinderella and the Land of Untold Stories. I just didn't expect expect her stepmother and stepsisters to be the ones who had gone there. And of course I got all teary when there was a reunion. Then Emma saved Ashley and I'm like, oh, it's so cute, I love it. Speaking of Emma saving Ashley, I love that you know, she was struggling and she's still, you know, obviously we're still seeing the struggle of her not really being sure what she's meant to do in this world and if she's gonna have a happy ending, which is really messing with her powers to actually help people ironically so it was nice to see henry who really was like well i believe in you and also being put in the situation where if she doesn't perform ashley would have died emma really did come through when it was important and so i was like yes yeah. speaking of emma and hook we got kind of a major moment i think between the two in this episode when she just tells him move in with me and i was like move in with her, it's adorable. I love that uh, she finally decided that even if she can't control what's gonna happen to her while she still can, she's just gonna be happy, you know? For now, it seems that that's what she's decided or she's taking a step forward with Hook, which I'm like, finally. Moving on to Charming, who's looking into his father's death. And I'm like, no, I'm definitely with Snow on this one. Just, just, just let it go. Of course you knew he wasn't gonna burn the card because then where's the fun in that? We need drama, but I think he should have burnt the card, you know? Nothing good is gonna come out of him trying to find answers about who killed his father. Actually, a few of you mentioned, I think in my previous review that you were thinking maybe Hook killed his dad. That would be pretty bad. I don't know if uh, David could forgive him for that or, you know, it's just gonna lead to very, very big tensions. I mean, Thanksgiving will be very awkward. The other possibility is that maybe Snow was responsible for his father's death because she was kind of pushing for him to kind of let it go and give up on it. Either she's like me, she knows nothing good can come out of it or she has something to hide. And again, that means nothing good can come out of, you know, looking into it. But of course, I think we're gonna find out, you know, what happened to him this season. That's, they're just planting the seed now and it's gonna be bad. <laughs> we end with Mr. Hyde walking out of his cell with the evil queen. First of all, he's probably like, why didn't you do this like two episodes ago, seriously? And second, I'm like, oh, that's just more trouble coming our way. And actually next episode will be all about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's backstory. And it seems like we hear Mr. Hyde saying, oh, I'm not the bad one. So is there something that we maybe don't know about Dr. Jekyll? 
I think it's very likely because Once Upon a Time is really good at kind of twisting stories and you know things not being what they seem. So even though maybe Jekyll changed the way he is now, maybe when he created Mr. Hyde, he wasn't so nice. That's all I have for this week's episode. What did you think of the episode? Did you enjoy the whole Cinderella twist? What about Emma and Hook moving in together? Oh my god. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe for more Once Upon a Time videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye! For some reason, I was like really emotional throughout this whole episode. Like, I don't know why, but I was tearing up. I was just like really into it you know I, I don't know I don't know if it's the fall I don't know what's going on but I was like an emotional wreck watching this episode <laughs> is it just me yeah <laughs>